The UP is home to many dog sled races. Have you ever wondered what it was like to drive your own team? I'll show you where and how. They love to run. Their favorite thing in the world. Stick around, it's time for 906 Outdoors. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. A lot of people will come out here and just really enjoy like the peace and quiet because there's not much that goes on out here. Over the winter, we've been to a couple of dog sled races here in the UP, but have you ever wanted to learn how to drive your own team of dogs? Nature's Kennel in the McMillan Newberry area offers just that. We run tours seven days a week, December through April, and we have guests seven days a week. We do three types of trips. We do a 10 mile trip that runs every day from nine to noon or one to four. And people can learn to drive their own dog team or just ride with a guide. Kids have to be 10 years old to drive their team on that trip. Uh, kids of any age can ride, any ability can ride. Um, we've had people in wheelchairs. It's something that different that they can do, get put in the sled. I've had a couple gentlemen who've been blind drive a team. So it's really something that and anybody can get at least get in for a ride in the winter. And then we do a 20 mile trip, which runs from nine to three. Of course we do 20 miles. And then that trip includes a pasty lunch because if they're in the UP, they have to have a pasty. And then we do an one night overnight. So we do a 20 mile trip to our remote winter camp, which is a yurt and a cabin and of course a sauna. And uh, that's all guided. So we cook meals out there at camp. Uh, we cook breakfast on the second day and then we do 20 miles and finish up back here at the kennel on day two. Tasha and Ed Steelstra built Nature's Kennel about 15 years ago and it has grown quite a bit over the years. There's eight yards now. The first couple years there was two and then each year we've added. This year we added a kennel eight. A couple years ago we added kennel seven. So we've expanded even just the dog yard and dog numbers. There are 240 Alaskan Huskies to feed, run, snuggle, and shelter. Their barrels, they're actually the perfect size for them so that they can crawl inside and curl up into a ball. And uh, the barrel is small enough so that it traps all the heat in there, but big enough so they can still curl up. And uh, we load it up with straw so they got a new nice soft bed in there. And these dogs are able to sleep out into negative 50 degree weather all the time. And that's what they'll do on the big races like the Iditarod or the Bear Grease or the Yukon Quest. When you visit, you'll most likely have the chance to mush some dogs who have run the Iditarod. Oh yeah, who's a good girl, Percy? She's ran the Iditarod twice in the Yukon Quest. Same with Prince Charming and UT down there, Cyrus. Alan Bully have run it, Stu's run it, Koa's run it, a whole bunch of dogs. Oh, probably two or three years was Ed's last race. Um, but yeah, he's run Iditarod eight times. I've raced all through the Midwest and in Europe. And then this, the tourism business got large enough that we just couldn't be gone for months at a time. You know, it's, it's hard. The racing season and the tourism season is the same time. Good boy! This winter's been great. I mean, a ton of snow and warm temperatures for guests. It's been, it's been a golden season for us. Usually for a tour, we crank out maybe like eight to eight to 10 miles an hour. This is the Queen Mary. We're gonna be taking a ride in it. And I'm just gonna get it all set up with the gang lines and stuff. And usually if you're given a ride, you'll go somewhere between seven to 10 dogs, depending on how much weight you have in the sled and the trail conditions. But these gang lines are made out of uh, what we call Canada cable. And that's just because they come out of Canada. They're really easy to make. They all kind of separate into sections just like that. And you can just take them apart and reattach them. Two, four, six, eight. Perfect. 
Over here, we have a couple things that we use to control the speed. I got this guy right here. This is called your drag pad. And it's just made out of old snowmobile track. It's got some spikes on the bottom to get some traction in there. And uh, all it does is just regulate the speed. So I'll put some pressure on that if I see the gang line getting a little bit looser, I want to slow down. And uh, when I want to come to a complete stop, I'm going to use this guy. This is called your bar brake. And how you use it is it just gets dug straight into the snow. You want to get it in as far as you can. The farther in it is, the easier it is to stop. Uh, I like to give a verbal command as well as the physical command. And that command is just put my foot in and I go, whoa! Just a long steady one. If you say like, whoa, 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 dogs are going to get all excited and they're going to hear, go, 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 go. Let's keep running. And you're probably not going to be stopping that fast. This is called your snow hook. Um, it's going to be sitting there the entire time unless we come to a stop and I need to use it. How I'm going to use it, I'm going to grab the handle just like so. Toss it in the snow. Stomp it in a bunch of times. You want to start hooking up some dogs? Watch me hook up dogs. So when you hook up dogs, you always want to start off with the uh, lead dogs first so they hold the gang line nice and tight. Uh, and then you can work your way on back. Come on, Woodstock. Good boy, Woodstock. All right, come on, buddy. Yeah, good boy, Woodstock. Come on, let's stand out, buddy. Let's stand out. Good boy. Uh, but this is a harness. It's gonna sit on the dog just like that. Uh, they got the webbing that goes on their back and then two armholes right there. And this is the neck loop. So when I put it on, I always fold the neck loop up over the two armholes just like so. And then you can just slide it on over their head. And this straight part is gonna go over their chest. So you're gonna give it a quick spin around. And then you can get one arm through one of the loops and the other arm through the other loop. A lot of times they'll do it for you. And you can unclip them from the chain, get a good grip on them. And you always wanna pop this collar out from underneath the harness so it doesn't rub up on their neck. And then you can walk on over. Um, a lot of dogs are super easy to just walk on over, but some dogs are stronger than others. So you do what we call two wheeling. And all that is just picking them up like that and they walk on over. Woodstock, come on, buddy. Let's stand out. Good job, guys. So next up, we got Hammer and Breslin. There we go. All the dogs were quiet until the harnesses came out and everyone in the kennel got excited. They all kind of light up and uh, they get really excited when they all start running. I think they're all kind of just trying to hype each other up or when they're in like gym class back in the day, how everyone was kind of like, pick me, pick me. Uh, then we got the swing dogs. These, I like to put some strong dogs that keep the pace pretty well, uh, cause they're gonna be controlling generally how fast we're going more or less. The uh, prime time for a dog to be running is between four and five years old. That's when their muscles are fully developed and they're ready to run. They usually have the good enough training by that time too, to really get down and get dirty. Uh, but some dogs like Hammer, he's only a year old. Breslin, he's two. And then Woodstock and Aruba are both eight years old. So they're nice and experienced and they're good to go. The wheel dogs are usually gonna be the strongest dogs. So I like to put the biggest, baddest, meanest dogs right this way, because they're directly connected to the sled, so they're gonna be pulling most of the weight. And away we go. Let's see. Ah! Commands for a left turn, uh, you're gonna say ha. Ah. And for a right turn, you're gonna say G. Uh, to continue on going straight, you say ambai. And then to go is let's go, stop as well. So there's really only five commands you gotta know. 
So the goal when you're running dogs is to uh, try and keep them at as steady of a trot as possible. Similar to like running a marathon, you know, if you're gonna sprint the first mile, you're gonna be done the first mile. Uh, but it's kind of difficult with dogs like Cheese and Kamek here because they just want, they have so much pent up energy that they just want to run and run and run. They love to run. It's their favorite thing in the world. Gee! When you unharness the dogs, you always want to start with the back two and then work your way up uh, onto the leaders. Doesn't matter which one you do first. And these guys are strong, so. Then you walk them back over to their house. Good boy, Kamek. You always want to give them some praise and some love and just making sure that they know they did a good job. Good boy. There you are. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. I take care of, I think it's 21 tour dogs and that starts with Charming and Percy here, and then all the way down to the end of the yard. And then I have eight more, and they all got their own little personality, their own little quirks. It's our job to figure out what they are and how they run best. Toss it up, flap. Flap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we used to operate with just two or three guides, and now we have six to eight. Since you guys are riding, um, all you have to do is keep your arms and hands in the uh, that at all times, kind of Disneyland rules more or less. They come right. from all over the country um, and it's a challenge, you know, you get people who just want an adventure, which it is, but it's also a lot of work. Generally we wake up at about 5.30 in the morning and then we come out here and we feed all of them because they need about two to four hours um, so they can fully digest their food before they can start running because otherwise they might get uh, what's called bloat. And it's just uh, their stomach twists up and it's not good. And we want to make sure that these dogs are staying healthy. So, you know, it's all about them. It's not about us. And it's a long season. They come usually mid-September, 1st of October to learn everything there is about dogs, the trails, how to run a team, how to do some behavior training with dogs, how to hook up the teams. Don't get lost out there. Get the dogs in shape so that by December they're ready to lead guests. I've only gotten lost like maybe seven times. That's no, no I've never been lost. I've never been lost. Don't worry. Yeah, we probably see around 2,500 people a year. They really do come all over the world. So, you know, credited that some to um, ecotourism has grown in the last five years. Social media has grown. Older people are taking a little more challenging adventures as well, doing something different. The bucket list type life, you know, that seems to be pretty popular. I turned 70 in January and I've got things planned out for almost the entire year to do something different every month. And dog sledding was one of the things I've always wanted to do. I love dogs for one, and um, I'm always interested in, you know, the Iditarod, and I just always thought it would be a fun thing to um, try. And um, so, here I am. Of those 240 of man's best friend at Nature's Kennel, some are just learning to be sled dogs. All of them are under one year old. Yeah, it's gonna be their first day of harness breaking today. And there is a playground of puppies. We retire all of our dogs into family homes when they're like six, seven, eight years old. Those are the good dogs to have. They're just good dogs. Puppies are just trouble. I let them burn some energy out before I make them into a house dog. <laughs> so if you love dogs and you love snow just as much as these fur balls do, I recommend a dog sled tour. And we keep trails, you know, that's kind of a unique thing about us. We groom our own trail system, have a great relationship with the DNR. And so our trails really do stay good through mid-April, if not sometimes the first of May. Might be like that again this year. <laughs> it's not going anywhere soon, I don't think. Today's Wild Game Break is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Make it fresh, make it yours. Find out more at cookingwildseasonings.com. 
I recently spent some time with pro fisherman Mark Martin and got some pointers on ice fishing. The other thing that we did here today, we split the difference between six and two pound and put four pound on today. So you just got to look at your situations, what type of fish may be here. And there's probably some pike here too. So, you know, four pounds going to be more than adequate if you got your drag and or you're prepared with a, a good reel and you want to downsize on your reels too when you're fishing so that it doesn't you know out balance you know it's a nice little balanced outfit right here it balances when it's in my hand right here so that i'm not really gripping that rod that ice rod i'm just holding it and cupping it in my hand as you see it balances right there with just the weight of the reel and the rod tip right out there and a little bit of the down pull from the little uh, little jig that's on the end of this. So I can jig it like this. And a lot of times when you don't have, if you don't have to hold onto the rod like that and you can just have it sit in your hand, if a fish hits it, you know, a bigger fish like a walleye or a pike or something, you'll feel it because immediately it'll outbalance that rod just with a, a slight hit from a bigger fish like that. Whereas if you're, the reel's so heavy and so big, or the rod's so big, it outbalance everything. You, it, it's not as easy to detect even a bigger fish's bite. So getting balanced equipment will allow you uh, to detect uh, every every uh, subtle kind of hit you're going to get from any kind of fish you're going to get. I hate to have. It's no secret that the Keweenaw Peninsula is the snowiest part of the UP. Houghton Hancock receives over 200 inches of snow each winter, with an average of 90 snowfall days. What may be more of a secret is many miles of cross-country ski trails, specifically the Mostohito and Churning Rapids trails, maintained by the Keweenaw Nordic Ski Club. In Finnish, Mostohito means cross-country ski, and this silent sport recreation area was created around the area's premier natural asset, the Swedetown Creek Gorge. The Swedetown Creek is one of, we always call it one of the crown jewels of Midwestern cross-country skiing that kind of seen the backdrop here. You know, you can ski down there quite a bit and have views just as scenic as this for a long ways. People love it. I think the early 80s were when these trails were developed. Uh, the trails run really through uh, the northern part of Hancock starting from the Houghton County Fairgrounds and you can actually go all the way out to Christensen Road which is about uh, halfway out to McLean State Park. Our focus for the ski club is simply to maintain the trails in the winter. We maintain um, probably about 24 kilometers, I think maybe close to 15 miles of groom trail. And the main access points are at the chalet at the fairgrounds. There's another one at Tomasi Road, which is right below the Hancock Department of Public Works, sort of in the general neighborhood of the hospital. And then the third main trailhead is out there, Christensen Road. And we do uh, provide parking out there, plowed parking. We have uh, portalettes out there, so we welcome everybody to come try it out. Almost the entire trail system is on private property, which is unusual, and it's a, I think it's a real testament to the community up here that these trails have been maintained on private land for so long. Uh, the land that we're standing on right at this very moment happens to belong to the city of Hancock. There is a sector of trail here. There's uh, probably about half a mile of trail that's on city property, but everything else is private land. Uh, a large portion of the Churning Rapids area, which is the northern part, is maintained by the Keweenaw Land Trust. And so we have permanent trail access there. What's kind of a little bit different about our trail, I think, is it's a little more solitude out here. 
we do not, uh, because it's on private land, we don't, we aren't able to really make big wide trails. Um, and so it's all old Nordic skiing. And if you like traditional Nordic skiing and you like the solitude, this is a good trail. My name's Jay Green. I'm president of the Keywinner Nordic Ski Club. I am pretty much a classic skier. I like the narrower trails with the kick and the glide. And it's more a social event where skate skiing is more in a keeping in shape endeavor. But the classic still keeps you in shape. We have some beginner trails, certainly. Most of them in the city of Hancock uh, that come up to Tomasi Trailhead are, are fairly beginner, but we have quite a bit that are intermediate to some that are fairly advanced. Uh, like I said, most of it intermediate, I would say. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We've got some good hills out there. One other thing that's a, a little bit different about our trails here is we not only have cross-country skiing, but we also encourage snowshoeing and snow biking. Um, we just ask that the, the snow bikers and the snowshoers utilize the side trail where we don't have the set tracks. And we allow dogs, that's something else. We're the only ski trail, at least in the area, that allows dogs on all their trails. We are the dog-friendly people and the dogs love it too. We should note the participation of the city of Hancock, who is a very strong partner in that support, that they provide uh, wages for the groomer. Our club uh, cost shares with the city on a lot of the grooming equipment. People who'd like to support or join the club, um, the easiest way to get involved is be to look at our website, which is keewanawnordic.org, and you can buy passes straight off the site there. Uh, you can also buy passes at Downwind Sports in Houghton, or Cross Country Sports in Calumet also have uh, passes for sale up there. So we also sell day passes for $5, First thing is come out and ski the trails and see how great they are. And bring your dog with you. We all love friendly dogs out here. <laughs>